I'm Chris Long with BMW Trailer Hitches, and today we're going to talk about the selection and installation process of the Continuum Weight Distribution Hitch. After you've unboxed the system, you'll want to become familiar with all of the components. They're in four main groups. You have your bar assembly, which is already assembled and ready to go. The head assembly, also ready to go and your hydraulic pump and cylinder assembly, which is already put together, primed, and the only thing you'll have to mess with this later is this vent hose right here will have to be cut to length and added to this vent on the top. Other than that, it's, it's assembled and ready to go. These two brackets, this one and this one, will be used to attach the pump box to the frame. These three bolts will be used to attach the box to the bracket. This hardware right here, with these bolts is what will attach the cylinder to the top of the trailer frame. We've also provided a little holder bracket for the bar assembly that you can attach to the jack tube of the trailer so that you have a way to keep this up off the ground when you're not using it. If you have an underslung coupler, your kit will include this additional box that has an extension bracket and bolt which will attach to this part of the hydraulic cylinder to make up for that difference on an underslung coupler. All right, let's get into the installation itself. It's very important to have the entire rig, the vehicle and the trailer on a nice flat level surface. In this case, we've got a shop floor and that is the most ideal. You could also do this in a driveway, concrete or asphalt, as long as it's flat with not a lot of humps in it. You would not want to do this on a gravel driveway or out in the field. The measurements will not be precise enough. The first thing we want to do is get the rig set up straight with each other and get the trailer level. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure, pick a point on the ground and measure up to the trailer frame. Do not measure to the bottom of the trailer tongue. We're only measuring to the bottom of the trailer frame. And then go all the way to the back of the trailer and get a measurement from the ground to the bottom of the frame rail here, we're 21 and a half inches. So the tongue is obviously higher than the rear, so we're gonna have to adjust the trailer tongue down. And we'll keep doing this process until those front and rear measurements match up with each other. Now that we have the trailer leveled, using those measurements on the front and rear of the trailer frame, we're going to take a measurement from the ground to the top of the coupler. And in this case, you can see we are at 22 and three quarters of an inch for this trailer. So you'll want to note whatever this measurement is because that's going to help us set up the head unit. The head unit comes uh, pre-assembled in the box in the down position. And in this case, it doesn't look like we'll be able to get up high enough to achieve the one to two inches higher than top of coupler that we need. We will need to change the shank into the rise position, where the top of the ball needs to be anywhere from one to two inches taller than our coupler height measurement that we had earlier. We're 23 and three quarters, so one inch taller than the coupler. These retaining pins that you use, they have one way that they shut all the way, and they have one way where they do not. It remains a gap there in the pin. Be sure you're using these pins in the position where when the ring shuts, it completely comes into contact with the pin itself. Now we're gonna get the trailer prepared to mount the hydraulic pump assembly. If you've got a propane tank cover, you wanna mark where that cover is at on the trailer, right there. Get this cover off. And now we're gonna remove the propane bottles. Now with the propane bottles removed, you can see that these trays, in most cases, are held to the trailer just using self-tapping screws. Every now and then they may be spot welded. If you need to move these, you can just grind that spot weld out, shift the tray back to give you the two inches of minimum clearance that you need, and reattach the tray to the frame using those same self-tapping screws. This is also a good time to check the frame for any other obstructions that would be in the way of us putting our pump on. In this case, we do have a breakaway switch on the inside of the frame. It's gonna be right here where that pump bracket's at. So we'll remove the self-tapping screw holding it on and shift it further forward and mount it where it's gonna be out of the way of the pump bracket. 
Now that we've made sure that there aren't any obstructions in this general area where the pump brackets will install, we'll take our outer pump bracket here. Notice that there are a series of four holes. Consult your instruction manual to show you which hole is appropriate for your frame height. This one happens to be a five inch frame, so it's the second hole from the bottom. And put that bolt through there and let it rest on the top of the frame while I put the back side of the bolt in the appropriate hole in the rear clamp bracket. Start a nut on the back side. Just start it for now. And now you can take the bottom bolt and put it through the slot in the outer bracket and through the hole in the inner bracket. Again, start a nut. And now what you can do is go ahead and thread these down, but you want to ensure that both the outer bracket and the inner bracket are perfectly flat on the frame. You don't want them at an angle and leave them just loose enough once you get them flat that you can adjust this forward and back. Because now we're going to measure back from our previous mark where the propane cover was. And once we're four inches back from that mark, it's imperative that you make sure that this bracket is vertical, perfectly vertical with the frame at a 90 degree angle, and then go ahead and snug those down by hand. Check that you're square with the frame. And now we can torque those nuts to 40 foot pounds. Be sure that you do this evenly. So what you do to the top one, a couple of, a couple of turns there, do to the bottom one. You treat it the same way you would a U-bolt. And then just keep alternating these back and forth until you reach torque. There. Now you're gonna take your hydraulic pump and cylinder assembly and gently lay the assembly underneath the trailer tongue for right now. And then we're gonna mount the pump box to the bracket. You'll notice that there are two holes on the end and a threaded hole here on the bottom. And this space right here between this fitting in the box is what slides over this tab right here. So we're gonna slide this into place onto that bracket and take the 3 8 flanged head bolts and thread those into those holes by hand. Got two here on the outside, one underneath. Okay, and then right before we torque these bolts down, this is also a good opportunity to push in on the handle to unlock it and extend it to make sure that we don't have any obstructions on the trailer that would prevent the operation of the pump handle. In this case, we're fine, so we're gonna leave it right where it's mounted. If you did have an obstruction, you might have to re-loosen and adjust the pump mount bracket to allow for handle operation. Now we're gonna to torque our mount bolts to 40 foot-pounds. This is directly threaded into that machined aluminum, so don't over torque. Now we're going to install the cylinder. Now, as we mentioned earlier, if you have a trailer that has an underslung or inverted coupler, this is the point in the installation where you would install your cylinder extension bracket. So be sure to put that on here. There'll be a relief cut in it here for the vent hose, which is on the left side of the trailer. Put your bolt in, torque that to 150 foot-pounds. For a regular coupler, we'll go ahead and take our top mount bracket, take the pin and clip out. I've got this resting on the bottom of the jack plate to hold it in place for me. And then we'll put the pin through the top mount bracket. Be sure and put your cotter pin in the back side and then let the cylinder hang right here in this area, allowing these lines and hoses to be free. And line that up evenly left and right on the trailer for the next step. For this next step, you'll take the two long bolts and your washer plate, insert those bolts into that washer plate and then drop that assembly down through the top of your top mount bracket if you're not pinching any cables or hoses here. You want the sides of the bolt to be directly against the frame on both sides. And then take your frame clamp bracket, which in this case we have a five inch frame, so we'll be using it in this position. If you had a six inch frame, the taller frame would require to use it in this position. So we'll take our 
clamp bracket and install it over the bolts and then go ahead and start the nuts onto those bolts on both sides. And then go ahead and spin these up, but you want the clamp bracket, I'm holding it with my hand here, to be flat against the frame. And snug those nuts up to where that clamp bracket remains flat with the frame, but leave it just loose enough that you can move this apparatus around because we're going to square this up in a later step. Now repeat that same process on the other side of the trailer. Now at this point in the installation, if you had to previously remove your propane tank tray, now is the time to reinstall that. So you'll get those same marks that you had earlier when you removed it, put the tray back and reinstall it, unless you needed to shift it back. Now's the time to put that back into place. Now with this assembled top bracket and cylinder assembly, we're going to adjust this as far back as we can on the trailer. And I previously made a mark where the propane tank cover came down. You see my back one back here, my front one here. And I'm going to adjust that to where I'm basically as far back as I can go and the propane tank cover can still come down into its position. Once I've got that back, we're going to square this up with the trailer. Don't square it off the propane tank tray because that could be not square on the trailer. Square it from the back edge of the coupler. So right here, I'm an inch and a half and an inch and a half. And then once you're square, you want it to be centered left and right. And right there I am an inch and 15 sixteenths and an inch and 15 sixteenths. So I've got it centered left and right and squared. Go ahead and finish snugging those nuts up as tight as they'll go by hand, making sure that your bolts are straight up and down with the trailer. And then you can take a wrench to hold the bolt head on top and use your torque wrench to torque these up to 40 foot pounds. Again, treat these like you would a U-bolt, tighten them good and even. So what you do to one side, as far as a couple of turns, and then repeat that on the outside and keep following that sequence until you reach torque. Once you get this side torqued down, you can then repeat the process on the other side of the trailer. As you can see, we've reinstalled the propane tanks and the cover. Now the next step is to make sure that the hydraulic cylinder is fully retracted. Right now, you can't see any chrome of that cylinder, which means it is fully retracted. However, if yours came out previously in the installation while checking for pump clearances, you might see some chrome right there. If that's the case, you want to close the needle valve here on the pump assembly and then crank the handle just enough that this fully retracts where no chrome is visible on that cylinder. Once that's fully retracted, reopen your valve. The last step of the hydraulic portion of the installation is to attach this vent hose to this vent on the top of the pump box. It's best to bring the hose up from under the trailer between the trailer and the box right here in this area. And this one's already cut to length from the factory in a place that's gonna be about perfect for this pump. However, if you end up with excessive length, this can be cut to length. Just be sure you allow yourself with some slack. And if you cut this, it's advisable to use like a hose cutter or a razor blade to give you a nice, clean, straight cut. If you use wiring dikes or cutters, sometimes that can smash the end of the hose and make it football shaped where it could leave leaks. So we're going to remove the plug by pulling back on this blue collar and pull the plug out. It's provided from the factory. You can discard that and then twist this to where it's lined up with the hose and firmly insert the hose into that blue collar until it's fully inserted and bottomed out. And that will actually self seal and you're ready to use the system. Before we install the load bar assembly, go ahead and back the vehicle up to the trailer, attach the trailer to the ball and raise your jack fully so that it's out of the way. And what we'll do is take this pin with the clip and the two bushings out of the factory position in the top hole and then go ahead and run your safety chains through the center of the unit. And then we're gonna attach 
that same pin through the center hole of the load bar assembly and the eyelet of the cylinder. Put your bushing in on the other side and pin the, the pin in on this other side. Now, we want to release the hydraulic pressure. Make sure your valve is open, should already be. And then, use your body weight on both sides of the continuum load bars and press down to fully extend the hydraulic cylinder. Now, with this extended, lift up on the bar assembly and attach it to the head. If that will not attach to the head in that step, then we'll take this pin back out of this center hole and put it in the top hole. The last step of our installation process is to install a fork holder bracket, which will help hold the load bar assembly when you're not using your trailer. It's also a useful place to keep the load bar assembly attached if you just want to spot the trailer without actually fully hooking up. So let's go ahead and get the load bar assembly disengaged from the head. There's a release lever here on the driver's side of the unit. Just pull that lever up and slide it off the, the head unit here. And then here is the bracket assembly that comes in your kit with a U-bolt and nuts. Put the U-bolt around your jack tube. If it's a larger diameter than two inch, it will not work. So you'll need to make sure that your jack tube is two inches or smaller. Most jack tubes are. And start these bolts by hand. Run them up snug. And then with that snug, be sure it's not actually touching the jack foot. So I'm gonna bring this up just to where it's off of it and snug those down to hold it in place. There we go. And then we're gonna tighten those to 30 foot pounds. Be sure that your bracket is square with the front of the trailer. You don't want it canted off to the side. Tighten these evenly as it is a U-bolt. Now that your holder bracket is on and torqued, you can take the leg assembly and place it on the holder right there. And that concludes the installation of the BMW Continuum Weight Distribution Hitch. Now all that's left to do is to adjust the system for your specific rig and you're ready to tow. If you have any questions that weren't covered in this video, feel free to call the number that's below on your screen and we'll be more than happy to help.